All right, so uh, patient uh, patient number one. So this patient had a history of anxiety and depression. Um, let's say this patient just comes in you know, uh, for, for your first annual visit. How would you screen a patient for psychiatric disorders? So in my uh, so in my evaluation of patients with a history of anxiety, uh, depression, you don't or, know anything uh, about the patient. You just this patient just uh, comes in just in general. How do you how do you screen the yeah. patient? Sure. So uh, first thing I, uh, I, uh, I, I, I will be asking the patient about uh, uh, about about her history of uh, depression, anxiety, see, uh, uh, and uh, I will and I will evaluate uh, 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 to see how long it, uh, she's had uh, that, uh, uh, that history for. I will also evaluate for uh, a possible history of mild versus major depression and uh, bipolar disorder. Uh, I will also uh, uh, check with the patient, see if she had any, uh, uh, um, any past uh, suicidal uh, suicidal uh, ideation or past uh, suicidal attempts. Uh, I will also check to see if the patient has any history of uh, of admission to uh, uh, to uh, to the psych unit in the hospital. Uh, also, which uh, which uh, medications is she taking? Uh, psychotropic uh, medications, antidepressants, uh, mood uh, stabilizers, anxiety, anxiolytics. Uh, so medications for do you, for do you do you have patient fill out a form or do you ask them yes. when you're interviewing them yes uh, um, I would do both uh, and I would also uh, and in my practice I uh, I utilize uh, uh, the Edinburgh uh, post uh, postpartum uh, depression uh, uh, screening form uh for all my patients uh presenting for 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 an annual exam during each uh trimester of the pregnancy and and also during uh postpartum so you use uh, the so you use the edinburgh for non-pregnant patient as well i do yes okay all right let's move on um patient number that's three it? that's it okay sorry about that <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Patient number three. Uh, how do you diagnose BV? So I so 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 I diagnose BV uh, uh, by uh, by by utilizing AMSEL's uh, criteria during a physical examination. Uh, if I'm in suspicion, I would send. Uh, um, a swab for a uh, nucleic acid amplification testing if mm, my physical exam is non uh, uh, is non uh, conclusive but uh, uh, that's how i primarily uh, diagnose bv what's the m cells criteria m cells uh, criteria is uh, uh, four points uh, uh, the presence of uh, uh, three uh, three out of four would uh, would would fulfill uh, the diagnosis of PV. Uh, the four uh, criteria or uh, or the four points are uh, presence of uh, presence of of homogeneous uh, grayish uh, whitish vaginal uh, discharge in the dependent portion of the vagina during physical uh, physical exam. Uh, decreased uh, vaginal pH uh, uh, less than uh, four point five. Uh, sorry, uh, increased uh, uh, vaginal B, uh, uh, pH more than 4.5. Is it increased or decreased? No, I think it's, I, I, I think, I think it's increased uh, vaginal uh, pH more than 4.5. Uh, also the present, uh, the, uh, a positive uh, whiff test, which is, um, which is done by uh, collecting the discharge with a Q-tip and then uh, placing it on uh, on on a microscope slide and then uh, waiting for uh, the discharge to dry and then uh, I uh, and then and then a whiff test is confirmed by applying uh, two drops of uh, ten percent 
potassium hydroxide to the slide and with uh, the development of a fishy or an amine order that would be uh, considered a, um, a positive uh, with test and that is uh, uh, and that is about 80 to 90 percent uh, specific for BV. Uh, also uh, the last point in AMSELS criteria would be uh, the presence of uh, of clue cells uh, uh, on a uh, microscopic examination of the slide, clue uh, 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 cells should be present over uh, uh, twenty percent of the slide, and clue uh, cells are uh, are poly polymorphonuclear uh, leukocytes that are that that are attached to the surface of uh, uh, the epithelial cells of the vagina. Okay. <clears throat> Patient number five. Um, so this was patient. It, so, 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 sorry, was it like increased uh, pH or like decreased pH? It's increased. Increased, right? Yeah, yeah it makes it. All right, patient number five. Um, so this patient has dyspnea, vaginal dryness. Uh, so you gave her a uh, vaginal lubricant. Um, what is Let's say this patient did not improve on the on the vaginal lubricant. What what would you do next? Uh, I would uh, have an. Uh, I would then uh, consult uh, a GYN oncology uh, uh, for uh, possibly starting the patient on uh, on topical. Uh, uh, on, on on topical estrogen. Uh, uh, as a second line, uh, as a second line management option with the failure of the vaginal lubricants. Are there any other um, available options for this patient? I would have to look that up. Uh, with the failure of the lubricants, <laughs> I believe uh, there's uh, there's some limited data on uh, uh, on vaginal. Uh, Valium tablets or uh, or or uh, suppositories, but I would need to look that up more before I answer that question. Okay. Uh, patient number six. Um, this patient had a history of uh, fetal demise. What gestational age was the demise? I believe she was in the early third uh, trimester. If I'm not mistaken, it was around 32, 30 to 32 weeks. Okay. Let's say this patient still desires uh, future pregnancy. How would you counsel her on her next pregnancy? So for her next pregnancy, I would uh, perform a thorough uh, uh, Preconception evaluation. I would. Uh, uh, Let's say she's uh, already pregnant. She's pregnant. I would uh, then. Uh, uh, I would then uh, counsel the patient about the importance of uh, prenatal care, um, adhering to regular visits, as well as uh, supplement her uh, during the pregnancy with uh, 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 prenatal vitamins, iron tablets. Uh, uh, and uh, depending on uh, the results of uh, uh, the blood work, if she needs uh, uh, vitamin B12, or uh, uh, I would uh, supplement her with that. Also, I would make sure that she is taking uh, folic acid 0 0.4 uh, milligrams daily uh, 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 throughout the duration of the pregnancy. I uh, I would also. I would also offer her uh, a carrier screening uh, to screen for a possible uh, uh, inherited uh, uh, diseases that she uh, that, uh, that she or her uh, significant other might be uh, carriers for, uh, such as uh, cystic fibrosis and um, spinal uh, uh, spinal um, muscular. Atrophy. Well, the, these are the things that you would do for any pregnancy, right? Right. So how how is this one different? How how would you manage this patient differently than someone who has no risk? Um, I would start. 
uh, antenatal testing for her uh, between 28 to 32 weeks, I would uh, start uh, uh, performing uh, uh, BPP, uh, BPP alternating with a non-stress test in the office uh, uh, two times a week, uh, starting uh, 32 weeks. Uh, between 28 to 32 weeks, I would consider uh, uh, weekly visits. I would also perform an early uh, uh, glucose uh, challenge, uh, challenge test for this patient since her uh, BMI is more than 30. Uh, I would also uh, uh, plan to deliver her at uh, 39 weeks or sooner, uh, uh, depending on what... Uh, 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 on what uh, perinatology think, and I would also uh, consider uh, 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 placing a, a referral for her to see uh, uh, perinatology uh, since the beginning of the pregnancy so they can uh, perform uh, some of the genetic screening for the patient, such as uh, the level two, uh, 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 like ultrasound. Uh, and I would uh, perform a selfie DNA as well as an alpha fetal alpha fetal uh, protein uh, uh, screen in my practice uh, as well as do uh, the carrier screening extended carrier screening oh and I would also uh, consider uh, starting the patient on um, oral aspirin uh, since she's uh, advanced maternal age with uh, with an adverse uh, with an adverse uh, outcome in a prior pregnancy uh, uh, these are two uh, minor uh, factors that you could uh, that I would start oral aspirin for. Okay, so uh, okay, um, let's say this patient tells you she's very worried about having another demise, and she want she doesn't want to she doesn't want to wait till thirty nine weeks. Or, uh. It's I would consider. Uh, uh, I. Mm, I would. Mm, I would. Mm, I would first and foremost uh, uh, reassure the patient that uh, until she is planned to be delivered at thirty-nine weeks, we will plan to continue with 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 the twice weekly antenatal uh, 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 testing in the office uh, to make sure that uh, uh, the fetal. Uh, well-being is okay. If any of that testing is not reassuring, then we would be moving uh, closer towards uh, delivery uh, uh, at that time, given uh, her prior history and uh, depending on her uh, gestational age, of course. Uh, if the patient is still uh, resistant to my recommendations, I would then uh, consider uh, uh, consulting with uh, maternal fetal medicine to see if they would be able to uh, to recommend a delivery at 38 weeks or at possibly uh, 37 weeks if they uh, see that as appropriate. Okay. All right, let's move on. Uh, patient number patient number eight. So yes, <clears throat> this patient was on lisinopril and you, s <clears throat> you switched her to labetalol <clears throat> why why did you do that <clears throat> uh, uh the exposure of uh the neonate during uh the early period of uh of embryogenesis to uh, uh to uh to uh lisinopril is not uh, recommended and it may result uh in uh severe uh in in, in severe in severe adverse outcomes and uh and birth uh, defects, uh, including uh, renal adgenesis. Okay. Um, and also, it looks like you switched the duloxetine to bupropion. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And uh, what's the problem with duloxetine? I believe there is not enough. Uh, uh, there is not enough. Uh, there is not enough evidence uh, to either uh, support or uh, or uh, or to contraindicate uh, uh, duloxetine use during the pregnancy, uh, since there's not enough data and 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 and. and and evidence to do so, uh, I would uh, recommend uh, 
uh, discontinuing it and uh, be, and and to and to start the patient on uh, an agent that has uh, that has a documented safety uh, profile to use with uh, pregnancy. Okay, so did you make the switch, or the the psychiatrist made the switch? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Okay. Um. <clears throat> all right. So, uh. Let's see. Patient. Patient eleven. So, this one. This patient has primary dysmenorrhea. What's the difference between a primary dysmenorrhea versus a secondary dysmenorrhea? A primary, uh, a primary dysmenorrhea is uh, defined as uh, cyclical, uh, irregular, uh, uh, low, lower abdominal uh, uh, cramps uh, that are that are originating due uh, to the normal uh, uh, functional changes in uh, the genital tract of females every month they can be explained by uh the a physiological effect of of uh, prostaglandins on uh the genital tract at at the time of menses uh and uh, uh and they are very commonly experienced by uh many patients especially during uh uh their uh, uh, the early ages of uh of uh, uh, menstruation uh, following uh, following uh, menarche. Uh, secondary this uh, 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 menorrhea is uh, is is present with uh, with uh, the presence of other uh, significant uh, pelvic organ or a genital tract uh, a pathology that may be. Uh, contributing to uh, uh, to the symptoms of uh, pelvic pain and uh, and pelvic uh, discomfort. Uh, these causes may include uh, fibroids, adenomyosis, uh, polyps, or uh, or ovarian cysts, for example. Um, and you say <clears throat> you said that some blood work for this patient. What kind of blood work did you do for this patient? For this patient, I sent uh, a free uh, and a total uh, testosterone level. I also sent uh, 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 DHEAS uh, to uh, rule out uh, pelvic, uh, sorry, to rule out adrenal tumor. Uh, I also sent out uh, a 17 hydroxy uh, uh, progesterone uh, to to rule out uh, a late onset uh, a, 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 a congenital uh, adrenal hyperplasia. Okay. Uh, so why did you send these labs? Uh, the patient was uh, complaining of uh, severe... Uh, uh, the patient was containing a severe acne that was, uh, uh, that was uh, disfiguring and uh, discomforting, and it was... Also, and it was also affecting her uh, uh, her uh, self esteem and uh, and her self confidence, and uh, she was very concerned about these symptoms. Uh, and uh, she told me that she tried all uh, like over the counter uh, uh, creams and uh, uh, products uh, without any uh, relief. So uh, so I did it just uh, to make sure that there's no uh, that there's no uh, secondary cause of. Uh, of her symptoms of acne. Okay. Uh, all right. So, patient number 12. So, this patient is pregnant. Um, so, you, you said you did depression screening and intimate partner violence screening. How do you how do you do these screenings in pregnancy at your practice? Uh, for intimate, uh, 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 sorry, uh, for for intimate uh, partner uh, violence screening, uh, I usually uh, make sure that uh, that 
the patient is in a private space, uh, preferably in the exam room uh, uh, without anyone else with her. I usually uh, make sure that uh, that the, that the conversation is carried out in uh, in a non uh, in a non uh, judgmental manner. Uh, 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 I do my best. Uh, 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 to make sure the patient uh, doesn't feel uh, self-conscious, uh, uh, and uh, and uh, I usually start uh, by asking the patient if she feels safe at home, if she uh, if she has ever felt uh, threatened, or uh, has she or 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 if she ever um, or if she was ever uh, physically uh, uh, violated. Uh, during her current uh, relationship or if she has ever been denied uh, birth control uh, by her partner or if she feels uh, a co-arrest uh, in the relationship or if she feels uh, that she is being uh, uh, that she is being uh, emotionally or um, mentally uh, drawn to a place where uh, she doesn't need to be by her partner okay <clears throat> and for uh and, and for the depression screening i usually uh utilize uh, uh the edinburgh uh, uh postpartum uh depression uh, uh screening for all my um my my pregnant patients at least once every uh trimester and uh and during the postpartum period as well during every annual uh physical exam uh or every annual uh, visit for my patients. Are there any other psychiatric disorders you screen for pregnancy, during pregnancy? Uh, I, us I usually ask my patients if they have, uh, uh, um, if they have any history of uh, postpartum uh, depression, uh, uh, postpartum uh, psychosis, or uh, any uh, suicidal events. Uh, I'm aware that uh, with bipolar uh, 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 disorder, there's uh, there's a higher risk of uh, the patients being uh, suicidal, uh, especially during the pregnancy and especially during the postpartum period. Uh, and I do uh, recognize the importance of that in my practice. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Patient, patient thirteen. All right. So let's say so you gave patient D uh, Tdap um, during her pregnancy. Let's just say this patient is not pregnant, um, and she has never. She doesn't know if she had Tdap before. How would you? Would you offer her Tdap? Yes, I would. Uh, depending on uh, on when she last uh, received the booster, like you said, uh, uh, if she doesn't she, know, she never, I, then, she never had, she never, she doesn't know if she ever had it. Then I would uh, vaccinate her. I would, uh, uh, I would give her uh, a Tdap dose, uh, and then I would uh, counsel her about the importance of uh, receiving a Tdap. Uh, booster every uh, uh, ten years, uh, or with uh, an uh, or uh, or if she had an or if she had an open wound with uh, contamination with a rusty nail, for example, then I would uh, then I would offer her uh, the booster uh, at closer intervals than than ten years with the with the occurrence of uh, uh, of such an event. Okay. Uh, all right. So, patient fourteen. This patient has hirsutism. Um, how do you how do you diagnose hirsutism? So hirsutism uh, is uh, diagnosed uh, uh, usually. Uh, it's a it's a it's a subjective concern. Uh, where the patient uh, reports uh, facial uh, face, uh, face, uh, facial facial uh, 
where the patient reports male pattern facial hair growth uh, around her face, her chin, or her lips, where uh, she needs to remove it uh, mechanically or through uh, or through like other means every uh, few weeks for uh, for uh, discomfort. For evaluation and uh, diagnosis of uh, hirsutism, I believe the 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 Ferriman Galloway score is uh, utilized. However, I'm not uh, 100% sure on how uh, to grade it or to score it. Okay. Um, and so for this patient, what blood work would you do on this patient? Or what, what kind of evaluation would you do for her, her system? So for her, uh, clinical picture uh, is also uh, significant for irregular uh, menses as well as uh, secondary uh, secondary infertility. My evaluation would be uh, to rule out uh, some endocrinopathies uh, such as uh, PCOS. For my uh, blood work, I would uh, order uh, 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 I would order uh, a pre and total uh, testosterone, uh, DHEAS, uh, 17 hydroxy uh, progesterone, as well as a, a, a prolactin and a, a TSH. Uh, I, I would also order uh, a fasting lipid panel, as well as uh, I would order uh, a serum insulin. Uh, although it's not... Uh, recommended to perform it during uh, the evaluation of uh, PCOS uh, patients uh, uh, at this time. I would still order uh, an FSH and an LH uh, uh, as an as an as an inverted ratio is uh, suggestive. However, not a diagnostic of uh, PCOS. Okay. Um, patient 15, you took this patient to the OR, it looks like. Um, was there a discussion about doing an in-office uh, sampling or in, in-office piece procedure instead of going to the OR? I believe the patient's symptoms were so, uh, were so uh, discomforting that she was... Uh, requesting a more uh, definitive uh, management option rather than just uh, uh, endometrial uh, biopsy as well as uh, uh, as well as uh, birth control pills so I did uh, counsel her about uh, uh, her management options and uh, one of them was uh, uh, to perform a hysteroscopy uh, DNC in the operating room under anesthesia uh, and while the patient was also uh, going to be under anesthesia, she uh, she did not mind the idea, or she uh, wanted to get a levonor uh, gestural IUD inserted uh, to minimize her symptoms of pelvic uh, discomfort uh, during the insertion in the office. So you mentioned the the ultrasound showed thickened endometrium. So what what is a thickened endometrium mean for a twenty seven so, year old? So uh, uh, I'm aware that uh, 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 the endometrial thickness using uh, the ultrasound has no value in uh, patients in uh, in their uh, pre uh, menopausal years. Uh, however, it can be uh, suggestive of some lesions in the uh, in the endometrium. Uh, uh, for uh, for further. For further evaluation of uh, uh, these patients, uh, uh, the pre-menopausal uh, uh, patients' endometrial uh, lining, it is uh, recommended to either perform a saline, a saline, a saline infusion sonogram or a hysteroscopy uh, a DNC if indicated. So, okay. So, what what number would you say would was there is uh, a number. Okay, there, there, there so one. how would you know when you need to do a sailing histogram versus not doing one? I would start the patient on 
on oral uh, contraceptive pills for about three uh, three to six months for uh, symptom management. Uh, and with uh, the failure of the birth control pills to manage the patient's symptoms, I would then consider uh, performing a saline infusion a sonogram uh, to rule out a possible uh, uh, to, rule, to, to rule out a possible endometrial polyp, for example. Okay. All right, let's stop there. That's it, bro. Yep. That was easy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. How, how, how did I do? Did I do good? Uh, yeah, not bad. But I think there's a couple of things that we have to go over. Just uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Um. So let's see. Patient number one, and ask you about the psychiatric stuff. Um. I look, uh I I know we talked about it last time with Hannah. I does can you use the Edinburgh uh thing for non-pregnant patients? I think like, in the course they said we can, but uh I don't remember uh uh what Hannah said, but I definitely remember uh but uh, like uh, 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 but like in my practice I use it all the time, you know, so Right, 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 but um yeah i would i would just double check so yeah now do you have something else that you use in your practice or um so i mean our office is really bad with these things um because uh -huh. we see so many patients and like we don't really do a lot of yeah. like real like depression stuff um but yeah you can say the same about my office don't worry about it <laughs> yeah <laughs> i know but i mean <laughs> just for the exam i would say um i think last time we talked about like the uh, uh, phq9 or something right mm, that was also mainly for i i think that's also mainly for um pregnancy pregnancy as well uh mm -hmm. let me see i thought i wrote it down somewhere uh, no i think this is, i'm not sure this is uh for pregnancy only i think what hannah said is uh is this is the one she uses or like she's gonna say in the exam that she will use for uh non-pregnant patients uh uh i have it uh pulled up since I, uh like the last time we spoke with hannah actually like it's still on the tab and there's a score either from one to 27 and it can give you either like minimal depression, uh, uh, mild depression, uh, moderate depression, severe depression, you know, all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll, I have to, I'll have to get back to you on that. Um, I okay. thought I wrote it down somewhere, but I, apparently I didn't. Um, all right. Anyways, <laughs> let's, uh, let's go to the next one. So the the BV the MCO criteria is three out of four. I think you said a really good. Um, I think you, except that uh, the the pH. You, I think you or you didn't know it's uh, negative <laughs> or what well, I mean. Yeah. Um, less or more. Yeah. Um, what what would, do you actually do the MCO criteria in the office? I try to do a whiff test, honestly. Uh, sometimes when I see like some sort of fishy discharge that looks like, oh, looks like gross, I do yeah. it sometimes. It's test. like a lot of the offices don't have microscopes. So most of the time you can't yeah, really do does. those. Yeah, ours does. And uh, usually when I do it, I just like know that I will be uh, like uh, like running behind because like uh, my schedule yeah. is so good. Like on right. some days, so good on, uh, like when I have time. But I don't do it with uh, with like every patient, honestly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then, because they uh, also they might ask what you do. What do you do? How do you check the pH? Uh, nitrazine. Okay. Other uh, right. paper. Yeah. Just making sure. Um, yeah, and also like, so for me, we don't have um, microscope, so mm -hmm. but you pretty much their symptoms can tell you you know like great discharge great discharge you can see that and then the whiff test like if they have a fish smell that's positive right 
and mm -hmm. then you just have to do a pH, and then that's the three out right. of the four. So you can you can just do that. So right. that's that's what I do. And also we check the the NAT test for Gardasil. Mm -hmm. Um, the uh, 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 the you know the affirm test. Gardenella, you mean or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gardenella. Oh, sorry, okay. that's what yeah. I meant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um. All right. Number five. So for someone who has uh history of uh ca breast cancer and they have vasomotor, I mean, um. Yeah, vas vasomotor symptoms or vaginal dryness. You can the the first line is actually after the lubricant is actually uh, SSRIs. Oh, uh, I should try that. I should try uh, paroxetin, uh, like in the problem. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. That's what you meant. History of paroxetin. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So and then, I guess after that. There's nothing else, right? I think there's a practice book because I was reading about that because that's something I'm I'm worried they will like read me about. Uh, uh -huh. I think there's like uh, certain types of uh, lubricants that you can try, like there's a uh, vitamin D lubricant and stuff like that. There's a uh, ACOG. What is it? Yeah, ACOG. there's a um yeah. There's a clinical consensus. Consensus. Um, yeah, yeah, that's going to Let me see. I actually wrote it. Uh, 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 there's like vitamin E uh, and, and like vitamin D uh, uh, yeah, suppository. D and E suppository, a lidocaine. Lidocaine you can try. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So these things I need to really know about. Uh, yeah. And I hope I, mm, you know, uh, like I hope I, that I'm able to, to, to like, to like impress them with, with my knowledge. Uh, that's why I put it there just to, to, to like bait them i guess yeah yeah, uh, yeah. But, I, but i need to like read about that i need to like uh, memorize that part so i'm able to say it better right know? and then you you know like the lubricant is like um you gotta say like hyaluronic acid lubricant it's not just like a ky gel right some yeah something that contains the polyacrylic acry acid or something Polyacrylic acid, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And then there's uh, uh, polycarbophil uh, based uh, vaginal moisturizer. Right. Um, yeah. There's uh, there's a bunch of uh, a bunch of things I can say, but I just need to like say it better, I guess. So I'll practice. Yeah. I'll oh, um, oh, is that your son? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have uh, one only, or do you have uh, more than one? I'm sorry. Do you have uh, one son only, or do you have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now? We just have one kid for now. Oh, just one. Yeah, that's enough, right? <laughs> <laughs> for now, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the 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 mice one. I think you answered it correctly. Um, if if the patient has anxiety over, then you can over it. Then you can uh consider. Maybe during thirty-eight weeks. Um, oh, for the, yeah, for, for the, the demise. Mm -hmm. For the demise. Uh, yeah, but uh, uh, but I'm not sure if these uh, recommendations uh, uh, because the baby was born alive. It wasn't like a, a like a stillborn. You know what I mean? But I'm not sure if that. Oh, so it's, a, that, it's a neonatal uh, demise. It's a neonatal demise. Oh, yeah. okay. So okay, I knew okay. that. So I knew like uh, what you were asking me, but I didn't. But but I don't know if that is like an indication to deliver early because the baby was already uh, born alive. You know what I mean? Got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if the if they ask you about it, just kind of um, you know clarify it. Right. Because uh, yeah. Because for me, I I just assumed that it was like a stillbirth. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, okay, I'm gonna need to look that up. Yeah, yeah, just you know. Um, and then patient eleven. Yeah, you said that correctly. The primary versus secondary dysmenorrhea. Um, 
and then the the workup for the acne that's fine too um i don't know did you give you give her ocps did that help with her acne at all did yeah it did actually. oh you did okay cool um and then of course you can also talk to her about i guess weight loss too Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Um, and then patient twelve. She's one of my thinner patients, actually. I'm sorry. BMI. Uh, she's one of. Um, uh, uh, she's one of my thinner patients. Oh yeah, yeah. I know it's crazy. <laughs> it's like, oh, you're obese, but you're actually okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Um. So the and depression. Then, um. Okay. Depression and or just psychiatric disorders in pregnancy, you're supposed to screen them at least one time for for bipolar disorder, um, and then um, and then you know you can use the Edinburgh um, every trimester to screen for depression. Um, the intimate partner violence. There's actually a synonym or acronym i guess that you oh, can okay. use is uh it's called safe uh mm -hmm. s-a-f-e save question screen it's just like four questions um you know uh mm -hmm. stress safety um and then afraid abuse and then friends fa family and then emergency plan so there's like mm -hmm. four questions that you can you know, just put put them on like a piece of paper and have them answer yes or no, and then yeah. that's like a good screening test, uh, screening for intimate partner violence, and you can you can What's do that. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. What's the scoring on it? Like uh, I think it's uh two out of four. I I have to double check. I forgot, or maybe it's just any positive, anything okay. that's positive. Um. And then also, um, for California, if you're suspecting partner int intimate partner violence, you have to report it to the government. So I don't know about your state if that's a requirement. Yeah, but just, no, that's not a requirement. <laughs> yeah, but just just yeah, know yeah, that yeah, we have so much intimate partner. Yeah, um, and then. What's the next question? Wait, where are we? The Tdap or like uh, the tetanus for uh, oh yeah yeah the Tdap okay so Tdap um this actually it's actually like a three dose for Tdap if if they haven't never received it before um it's like a it's it's kind of like a garter cell so it's like uh, you mm -hmm. get it one time and then in a in a month you get it another time and then in six months you get another one for the first time like if they have never had it before so you're supposed to give them like a like a regimen mm -hmm. and then it's every 10 years booster cool yeah so it's just fyi um and then hirsutism yeah so the the uh, what is it called the Fremian Galloway whatever um, scoring yeah. system, so it's it, so it's nine parts on the body that you can score them on one to four, and then every anything over eight is considered hirsutism. Okay. Um, cool. And then uh, if you're if you're for Asian, the scoring is less. It's like two to three. Because uh, right. Asians have less body hair. Correct. Yeah. And with like, uh, and with like uh, middle, uh, like Easterners or yeah, whatever. Yeah, middle Easterner top. is higher, but right, I don't know right. the actual number. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, but since you have it on your thing, you should probably know that. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, and then fifteen. Uh. I think that's fine, but just, um, you know, because you said thickened endometrium and there's no thickened endometrium in uh, premenopausal. So just be prepared that they might ask you that. Right. 
you could just say like, oh, the ultrasound, ultrasound. yeah, ultrasound. Uh, it was said they can endometrium, but I know there's no such thing as, yeah. Right, that's what I, yeah, I just need to work on my words, like, you know, like have a sentence and just like memorize it and that's going to be my, uh, uh, my like defense, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then also the, I don't know if you need to always get DHEAS for everybody who who you're uh, screening for like PCOS, because um, that's usually so. yeah, that's usually for someone who has like virilization, like really bad like testosterone, you know, symptoms, like if they have like clitoromegaly or like acromegaly or or some something in that of that nature then you screen because like usually people with um because you're screening for adrenal um tumors right, right so right, they, right. they're usually like really high has like really high testosterone levels mm -hmm. so they will have like virilization not just like a little bit of hersu um, correct yeah sure. Um, but yeah, I think that's it, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. All right. Okay. Cool. Uh, all right. You have time still? Uh, to... yeah. Yeah, let's do, uh, let's do your case list. Let me just open it up. Uh, cool. That's us here. Let's see. Are you off tomorrow or are you working tomorrow? I'm off. Nice. You doing anything fun or just studying? No, <laughs> just studying. Yeah. California is <laughs> too expensive, man. Huh? You can't do anything in California. I it's, know. California is too expensive, man, and the traffic. Is <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. an hour to anywhere. Yeah. Do you want to do uh, like a GYN or office or? Whatever you want. Let's do uh, whatever you are, whatever you prepared. Uh, yeah, that's fine. We can do office, I guess. All right. Um, okay. All right. Uh, for your uh, for your office list. Uh, case number four. It says in her problem she has uh, a class two obesity and uh, chronic hypertension what is class 2 obesity how do you manage that uh sorry uh, what is uh what is uh what is class 2 obesity class 2 obesity is uh bmi greater than 35 to uh, 40. And what's a bmi bmi is body uh surface or body mass index is uh, a, a way to measure um, the patient's uh, uh, obesity level um, it's uh, the unit is like kg per meter squared okay uh... All right, and then uh, how do you uh, calculate it, like the BMI? It's kg per meter squared. Oh, okay. So, uh, uh, so, 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 like the weight and in, uh, in, in like kilograms over uh, the height in meters squared. Uh, it's a it's a body surface area, so you have to plug it into um. A calculator based on oh. patient's height and uh, and the weight. Oh, okay, okay. And then uh, for this patient, uh, looks like you're doing uh, uh, so. So if uh, someone has like uh, class two obesity and like chronic hypertension, uh, is it possible that they have uh, meta metabolic syndrome? Yes, the so this patient is actually positive for metabolic syndrome based on the 
the the the five criteria. Mm, what are the criteria for metabolic syndrome? Uh, so you have uh, weight circumference greater than thirty five. Um, the triglyceride greater than one fifty. Uh, blood pressure uh one thirty over eighty five or patients already on medication. Um uh HDL less than fifty and uh tri not triglyceride right, um fasting less than oh greater than a hundred. Fasting glucose greater than a hundred. Right. Or if they're on uh, medications, too, or for, yeah, or on medication for diabetes. Cool. So it looks like you were doing a workup for uh, recurrent, uh, uh, like recurrent uh, pregnancy loss for this patient. Correct. Right. Uh, what is the most common cause of recurrent pregnancy loss? Most common is, I believe, idiopathic. But um, a lot of times, it's uh, in first pregnancy, um, first trimester pregnancy loss. Uh, pregnancy loss is um, uh, genetic uh, or chromosomal abnormalities as well. Good. And what is uh, what is antiphospholipid syndrome? How do you uh, diagnose it? Antiphospholipid syndrome is a uh, autoimmune disorder. Uh, it could be inherited or acquired. Um, to diagnose the syndrome, you would need um, one clinical criteria plus one uh, lab work uh, criteria. Um, for the clinical criteria, either patient had a history of uh, a VTE or if they have a uh, pregnancy, uh, uh, pregnancy criteria uh, suggestive of uh, APS, such as uh, uh, three um, pregnancy loss less than 10 weeks or one uh, pregnancy loss greater than uh, 10 weeks, uh, but morphologically uh, normal um, uh, fetus, uh, or if they had a um, early 34, uh, less than 34 week gestation um, birth due to uh, placental utero uh, per, um, insufficiency. And then you have the uh, lab work criteria. Um, anti, uh, you usually check for anti uh, lupus anticoagulant, anti cardiolipin antibodies, and anti beta glycoprotein antibodies. Um, and then you have to repeat the test in 12 weeks if it was positive. Okay, good, nice. Uh, put, good, very good. And then uh, what do you got? You got uh, patient number five. It says in the treatment you did uh, preeclampsia uh, prophylaxis. What is preeclampsia uh, uh, like prophylaxis? How do you do that? Uh, pre preeclampsia prophylaxis is uh, is baby uh, usually baby aspirin. Uh, if the patient meets criteria. Uh, then we will start them on a, a baby aspirin until uh, usually around 36 weeks. Okay. What is uh, What are the criteria uh, to start someone on a uh, low-dose aspirin? Uh, so you have the uh, major criteria. You just need one of them. And then you also have minor criteria. Um, and you need two of those. Uh, for the major criteria, it's uh, prior history of preeclampsia, uh, hypertension, uh, chronic hypertension, uh, uh, anti-immune, autoimmune uh, diseases, uh, di uh, um, uh, kidney diseases, um, 
and I think one more, but I can't think of it right now. Um, and then you have multiple uh, minor criteria such as uh, pri uh, first pregnancy, obesity, um, AMA, IVF pregnancy, low socioeconomic status, um, black race, um, uh, yeah, that's all I can think of right now. Okay. And why was this patient started on uh, low-dose aspirin? Did she have uh, a history of preeclampsia? So her prior 27-week uh, stillborn, um, oh, no, the, the patient has antiphospholipid syndrome. That's, that's why. Mm, okay. And uh, she's also on uh, anticoagulation uh, uh, during the pregnancy? For the antiphospholipid syndrome, yes. Okay. Are they um, uh, what mm, what anti uh, coagulation was she on? She was on Lovenox forty milligrams daily. Okay, and uh, and how long would you uh, continue that for? I would continue her until thirty six weeks and switch her to. Um, uh, uh, unfractured uh, heparin until she delivers. And then uh, once she delivers, would you stop the anticoagulation? Yes, once, well, during delivery, I would stop the coagulation and then postpartum, I would restart it for another six weeks. When would you stop the anti, uh, 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 the anti uh, coagulation? Uh, uh, during labor, and when would you uh, resume it uh, postpartum? If she had, um, if she was on uh, unfractionated uh, heparin, I would stop it uh, when she presents mm -hmm. in labor. Um, and then, if she had a mm -hmm. normal vaginal delivery, I would restart it six uh, hours after the delivery. And if she had a C-section, it will be uh, 12 hours uh, after delivery, and it will be uh, low molecular weight heparin when I restart it. And let's say the patient's last dose of Lovenox was 22 hours uh, before, and now she is uh, requesting an epidural. Would you give her an epidural? 24 hours before uh mm -hmm. this is a prophylactic dose heparin then uh yes okay uh, would would you consult would you uh would you uh, would you consider a consult with anesthesia well yeah i mean um, I would I would definitely uh, consult anesthesia to see if they're comfortable placing the epidural and knowing the fact that um, the Lovenox was given 20, 22 hours before. What's the risk of having an epidural if uh, uh, if the patient uh, is on anticoagulation? A uh, risk of. Um, uh, developing a, um, uh, a hematoma in the, um, oh, I guess, a, 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 um, what's that space called? <laughs> mm -hmm. Epidural? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ep epidural uh, hematoma. Yeah. 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 Okay. And what can that lead to? Uh... Well, patient will have a lot of uh, uh, pain, headache, um, and then it could also uh, compress on the uh, the nerves around the area. Good. Yep. Yep. And it can lead to like uh, paraplegia or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Case number six: labial ulcer. Uh, Ninety-year-old patient. Did this patient have? any STI testing when you were evaluating her? Uh, 
she was um she was low risk for STIs since she hasn't been sexually active for um a very long time. Um okay. so th the risk of her having STIs um is very low on my uh differential. Sure, very good. Nice. Uh patient uh number seven, abnormal uh, abnormal abnormal uh, uterine bleeding. What is abnormal uterine bleeding? What is the definition of it and how do you uh uh how do you uh like what are the first things that would come in your mind and someone who's complaining of abnormal uh uterine bleeding who is uh who is uh 45 years old uh abnormal uterine bleeding is defined as uh um anything any uh bleeding that's uh out of the ordinary cyclical uh bleeding that the patient ex experiences um usually normal cyclical uh bleeding or, or period is defined as uh more than uh 21 days and less than 35 days uh in between the periods um and also the uh the period itself usually lasts uh around uh eight days um and the bleeding uh, amount is uh usually less than 80 cc's um however this is hard to quantify for the patient um so usually uh the patient would know whether or not um, they are experiencing uh, increased bleeding uh, out of the ordinary for 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 each patient. Um, no. and, th and then uh, in terms of uh, the cause of uh, someone who's uh, 45 um, having abnormal bleeding, um, I usually uh, always go to the acronym uh, Palm Cohen. Um, and I would uh, basically work through the each individual uh, possible causes to try to find out uh, which one this patient belongs to. What is the palm uh, coin? Uh, what is it? What are the like? Uh, what does it stand for? Uh, so uh, P is for polyps. A is for adenosis, L is for leiomyoma, M is for uh, malignancy or hyperplasia, C is for uh, coagulopathy, uh, co uh, O is for ovulatory dysfunction, I is for iatrogenic, E is for endometrial, N is for non otherwise specified. Okay. For your uh, for your workup, uh, you said you did labs. Uh, what kind of labs do you uh, do you order for a patient with abnormal uterine bleeding? Uh, usually, for uh, someone who's forty five, um, I usually order a, a CBC um, uh, with differentials, um, and then a a type and screen, and a. Uh, uh, coagulopathy workup such as uh, just a, a PT and PTT. Okay. Do you do a, a urine pregnancy test? Oh yes. Yeah. In in the uh, in the office, yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. And then we have. Uh, uh, let's see. Wow, we have a lot of. Uh, like older patients you like to see uh older patients huh i don't like to uh, see it but <laughs> they are there <laughs> all right, no, all right yeah. let's see yeah. uh case number 14 28 year old nolip with acute pelvic pain and then uh what was your uh differential uh diagnosis for this patient with like acute uh pelvic pain uh differential will include um a 
well, non G O N and G O N uh causes for non G O N. I would think about uh, acute appendicitis, um, uh, gallbladder diseases, uh, uh, trauma, uh, or psychiatric uh, or neuro neurogenic disorders. And then for uh, GYN causes, I would think about uh, uh, ovarian torsion, um, uh, 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 aborting fibroids, um, or a PID, or a tubal ovarian abscess. Uh, what about a pregnancy associated? Um, oh yeah, so a, a topic pregnancy, um, or or just a miscarriage as well. Okay, cool. And it says HPV co-test. How do you do an HPV co-test? What is that? HPV co-testing is uh, testing for HPV uh, um, DNA and also a, a cytology uh, at the same time. Okay, and and hers came back negative. Uh, if it was negative, when would you uh, uh, repeat the test? Five years. Five years. Okay, good. All right, and then. Uh... All right. Did you need to do uh, like HPV for her? Like, did you have you, to? Do it? Um, so you don't have to. Uh, so any anybody uh, uh, between twenty five to twenty nine, you could either do uh, cytology every three years or HPV testing every uh, every five years, starting at twenty five. Okay. Nice. Good. Uh, do, you, mm, do you do that in your practice? Do you do uh, primary uh, like HPV testing or no? Yeah, so after 25, we do HPV testing. Cool. Yeah. And that, uh, and that tells you like uh, the high risk uh, uh, subtypes and stuff or? Yeah, usually we, uh, um, it depends on the labs that we send to. Some labs we do, uh, they they specify sixteen and eighteen, but most most of the labs they only um, just tell you if they're at a, uh, have a high risk, but they don't specify the exact type. Okay, cool. All right, so we got case fifteen. Uh, the patient had BV. She got uh, 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 treatment for uh, for uh, bacterial vaginosis. What is the treatment for uh, bacterial vaginosis? The treatment uh, usually I prescribe uh, metronidazole 500 uh, POBID times uh, seven days. What if someone uh, has uh, has uh, bacterial vaginosis again? Like what if you prescribe that and they either had a recurrence or they're still symptomatic? What would you do? Uh, if, if it's their second um, occurrence, I would retreat it with uh, metronidazole. Um, however, if they have more than three occurrences within the past year, uh, I will consider them as uh, having a recurrent uh, BV. Um, and uh, I would discuss with them uh, options, including uh, trying boric acid uh, um, or uh, being on a suppression uh, therapy for uh, for for six months using uh, metrogel. Okay. Uh, uh, what's the dose for uh, metrogel? Like how many times a week would you tell them to use it? Uh, metrogel is uh, I think five five per uh, point seven five percent. Uh, metrogel and then five gram every uh, twice twice a week for six months. Okay, good. And then patient sixteen, it says uh, recurrent yeast infection. What's a recurrent yeast infection? What's the definition? Of it? Yeah, recurrent yeast in infection is four times in the last uh, year or three times in the past 
six years. Six years? Six I mean, uh, six months, sorry. Okay. And uh, what are some of the features that you see with like recurrent yeast infection that, uh, that you don't see uh, clinical features that, uh, that you don't see with uh, uh, like a regular yeast infection? Like what are the things that uh, that uh, like what are the like associations that uh, the patients might have that would uh, predispose them to that? So if the patient has some type of chronic um, medical condition such as uh, um, diabetes or uncontrolled diabetes, uh, if they had uh, immunosuppression, if they're on some type of glucocorticoid uh, therapy, or, uh, or if they're HIV positive. Um, sometimes if the patient has, uh, if uh, the patient's obese and they have a lot of um, a redundant tissue down there, uh, which traps moisture, um, mm -hmm. or if the patient, uh, you know, sweats a lot and um, they can increase the risk for recurrence. And what are some of uh, the clinical features you may see on a uh, physical exam when you like examine someone so, who who is uh, like obese and they have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, like like moisture in their inter uh, inter uh, trigus areas or like inter oh you, you can see uh, erythema around the area. Um, swelling, uh, thickening of the uh, uh, the skin. Um, also, you can sometimes can cause ulcerations if you have chronic uh, yeast infections. Um, yeah, just sure. Yeah. Okay. And uh, is uh, is uh, is recurrent yeast uh, usually uh, usually usually caused by candida and which like type of candida usually causes it uh usually recurrent is is um albacan but sometimes with um a uh, resistant yeast it could be um glab uh glabar glab glab glabrata glabrata right. um glabrata uh, for those you would treat with a uh, boric acid, this patient actually tried um, boric acid and uh, she didn't really tolerate the the medicine. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so so for her, the suppression therapy was um, just um, uh, diflucan, uh, one hundred fifty milligrams uh, weekly. How else, like, how would you manage, like, what's the treatment for uh, uh, regular yeast and, like, recurrent yeast? Um, if if it's, like, their first or second episode, you can just do a one-dose um, diflucan, uh, 150 milligrams one time. Uh, if they have multiple, do uh, multiple times uh, yeast infections, you could treat them with uh, three dose regimens um, every 72 hours um, times three doses. And if that mm -hmm. doesn't work, you can discuss with them about uh, six months weekly treatment. Of, uh, with what? With, uh, with Diflucan as well. Yeah. Oh, that's all right. Assuming, cool. as, wanna... I guess, assuming yeah. it works for her. Sure. Yeah. Well, what if it doesn't work? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Damn is... it. I should have just <laughs> shut up. <laughs> yeah, this is something we need to, like, all know. It's very, I know. Like, I think. Very uh, what if it doesn't work? <laughs> Then okay. you you, you can out. try you can try um the boric acid or uh what is the other one is called uh, terconazole like a stronger medication. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is another. Yeah, I need to look it up too. I'm not sure. This is like very annoying to keep up with. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, do you want to keep going or? Uh, uh, I I think we can stop here. Yeah, we're gonna go. Yeah, yeah. I think we did pretty good. All right, dude. So I think for the treatment of uh, BV as well, like non recurrent BV, uh, you, you can try uh, clindamycin too. Uh, there's, right. Uh, you can. Uh huh. There's uh, there's like there's like clindamycin uh, tablets. There's the cream, and there's uh, uh, the 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 like ovules that you can try to. Uh, so that's something I think uh, you, mm, you can mention too. I feel just uh, yeah, it's not mm-hmm. uh, metronidazole. And there's like another uh, like antibiotic. Uh, I think uh, uh, I think uh, tinny. Tinidazole, uh, that's like stronger than uh, metro uh, nidazole. You can try that too if the patient has like her second BV episode or whatever. And she tried mm-hmm. the metro it didn't do anything. You can go to uh, uh, to to to, to like right? Uh-huh. Yeah, and, and I'm also not sure uh, if boric acid uh, is used for recurrent yeast because I think with yeast. The vaginal pH is uh, is like acidic, like it's not like alkaline. It's not like uh, trichomonas and BV where it's like alkaline. Yeah, uh, bor- I think boric acid is just for the gabrata. Gabrata, right? Okay, you, cool. Yeah, because like, how else would you treat gabrata? Like, you can't. Uh, I don't know. It's because yeah, it's I, uh, resistance to diflucan. Oh, That's azoles. Right. Okay. Yeah, the azoles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, for the treatment of uh, yeast, uh, you can also try like a monistat, like uh, like like over the counter uh, topical azoles. Uh, some patients uh, prefer using that rather mm-hmm. than a pill. You know? uh, I think that's it. But uh, like, I need to read up on recurrent BV and like recurrent yeast too, because I feel that's something they can definitely ask us about. Oh yeah, you know? for sure. Yeah. And then I think for your uh, differential with uh, with 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 like pelvic pain was really good, but just don't forget uh, the pregnancy. That's the thing that we all forget when. Yeah, we, I know. We, like we start talking about CBC and. Uh, ultrasound and MRI, and we forget about a urine pregnancy test, you know. Which is right. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure. And then uh, what else? And then abnormal uterine bleeding in a forty-five-year-old. I think what I wanted, what I was asking you is, like, if uh, someone who's like thirteen or or like fifteen years old who's having like abnormal uh, uterine bleeding with like menses, you, you would think of like a coagulation uh, disorder, and mm-hmm. then like. Uh, you know, like an infection, and then like a pregnancy, and then r- really low and uh, uh, really low on your list would be like fibroids and things like that. But for a patient uh, like her, uh, you should think about these things first, and then a coagulat with you uh, last. You know, so right. Just, uh, but I, yeah, yeah. That's why I didn't mention coagulopathy as like, like I didn't even like you know try to uh, work up for it because she's already old. So. Yeah, yeah, and then I think the um, I think he, uh, um, I think you said just uh, PT PTT, which is which is fine, but uh, I mean it wouldn't uh, like it wouldn't be like as like uh, like uh, uh, like as like indicated than doing like a urine uh, pregnancy test. You know what I mean? Yeah, so just, yeah. Uh, yeah, because so yeah, I, I, I usually don't even get PTPT. I just... Uh, I don't do it, yeah, except uh, like if someone's in DIC, then... Right. Yeah. But... <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I uh, usually just get a CBC. <laughs> yeah. yeah. CBC. Yeah, that, that sounds good. And then I think with uh, the workup from like the practice bulletin for, for like AUB, they say to do also like a TSH, a prolactin, and uh, and, uh, and 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 like an a1c that's something they say uh uh uh, like in the bulletin i think i saw it somewhere for a1c Uh, for abnormal urine bleeding yeah just to make sure she doesn't have uh 
uh, uh, some sort of like uh, vasculopathy or if you're planning surgery, you want to see what that baseline is or whatever from, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I think that's something I saw in one of the bulletins, but, uh, and, and, you know, and, and that's what I do in my, uh, in my practice either way. That makes sense. And then, yeah, and then antiphospholipid was really good. I think you did really good there. Uh, and I think the most common cause of recurrent pregnancy loss is not known or like, uh, um, or like idiopathic, like you said. And uh, the most uh, diagnosed is uh, the chromosomal or like the genetic abnormality. So that's pretty good. And I think, uh, and I think you did really well with uh, metabolic syndrome. That was really, really good. Uh, the BMI that I was asking you, I think it's measured as a weight in uh, kilograms over height in meters squared. I don't think it's body surface area. I oh, think, really? Yeah, oh. I think the body. Mm, I think the body surface area uh, is used when we do like the uh, 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 the dosing for like uh, uh, yeah, method like, uh, yeah. But I don't think uh, BMI is one of them. Uh, like it's uh, it's like uh, weight in uh, in like kilograms over over like height in meters squared. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, okay. Oh yeah. Uh, let me double. The, yeah, I'll double check. Sure. <laughs> and then uh, yeah i think that's everything we went through my dude so yeah that's pretty yeah. good thank you so much yeah that's very good yeah of course, of course. yeah um uh, okay so <laughs> let's uh, uh aim for sometime next week sure uh let me just uh, like hannah and the group uh to let them know that i uh that i won't be able to come like today uh -huh. like later yeah no problem <laughs> But let me see. What, um, let's see what she wants to do with us. September. You, uh, you want to do Wednesday? Uh, like Wednesday, Wednesday the sixth? The Wednesday the sixth? Yeah. Um, call? What time? Like night? Like, you night know, uh, 7 p.m. or something? Yeah. Uh, so. Let's see. So I'm actually doing the uh, the webinars with the example. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, uh, I think it isn't, ends. I think isn't it ends. there one today? I'm sorry. Uh, um, isn't there one today? Yeah, it's t later tonight at five. Five thirty. It starts at five. Uh, five thirty, I think, or five p.m. One of those. Uh, 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 like, uh, like Eastern time or uh, or like our time. Our time. Our time. Five. Yeah. I think it's oh, five thirty really? for us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you okay. sign up for it? Oh, oh. Uh, do I need to sign up for it? I don't know. <laughs> it's. I mean, it's up to you. It's. Uh. I mean, you just have no, to. No, you I have mean, to pay for it. Oh, it's the paid one, not the yeah, free yeah, one. yeah. Not the free one now. Oh, That's what, okay. And it's uh Sunday to Wednesday, so it's like five thirty to six thirty, I think. So oh. yeah, I mean we can do like seven or seven thirty. That's fine. On the sixth, okay. On the sixth, okay. yeah. And like, if you're on call or something, and you're not able to like attend one of them, do you have uh, like access to like? Uh huh. Over yeah, there's the uh, recordings. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, did you do? Uh, did you do uh, like any of them or? Not uh, yet. I I'm no. just gonna do this month. Cause uh, we, I don't have time for <laughs> this. Yeah. Is the last are month. Doing, yeah, are you doing uh the hot seat at like any day? Yeah. Or? Oh, you are. Yeah, but you just—I oh, right. mean, I think they just rotate through the people who want to do hot seat. It's not like a guaranteed, cause I—I uh, I feel like it's gonna be a lot of people on it, cause uh, it's, you know. Yeah. Yeah, let me look at that. Uh, but let's plan on Wednesday at seven or seven thirty or yeah. whatever. Yeah, sounds good. And let's I'll try to look into uh, mm -hmm. signing up for that. All right. Cool. Yeah. Cool. I'll see you then. Okay. All right. Have a good day. Okay. All right. You too. All right. Bye.